So, as promised, uh, we are a week uh, later than, than we were going to do this. I've been very, very poorly, and then we kind of had Christmas and things like that. But uh, I will try to stick to production schedules. We're going to 867 start, as promised, The Great Adventurers. And we're going to do the scenario of, um, of Rory Kid. Now, it says here, One day Rory Kid's descendants will found the Shardom of Russia. Oh, will they? The destiny of this great dynasty rests in your hands. That's what we're aiming to do. We're going to begin the we're going to create the empire of Russia that's the plan ideally as Rory as Rorik but uh, it doesn't have to be as Rory as, uh, as Rory kid it could be um, it could be as, as his son or, or whatever so quick analysis then so having a quick look at our leader himself very very high marshal I think this is a guy that's gonna to have to be fighting his own battles but also incredible um, diplomacy, um, everything, uh, even stewardship's good. Stewardship is absolutely fine, so so that's very good. Uh, we're brave, which makes us a little bit more likely to die in battle. We're just, which means we don't really, right, I don't think we like taking counties from people. And it might be that it even gives us a bit of, um, a bit of stress when we murder people. So I, I need to check of that I'm not 100% sure but it's certainly there are some disadvantages to um, to just ambitious is painful as well because we're going to have to give counties away as our kingdom expands and that's going to make us um, um, uh, stressed um, gregarious so we've got a character who is going to struggle with um, stress I think in this game um, we are quick our wife is intelligent so she's going to be great for making some uh, some children uh, she's also very good on the stewardship in fact just to, to see what happens if I change her to manage domain I go up to six which is really really good we'll leave her on this for now so we don't need we don't need six so I think I'm gonna be hanging on to the wife for now um, I do have an heir he's an adopted legitimized bastard and he has my quick trait, which is really good. He's a reasonable soldier, a reasonable um, a steward. Um, in other respects, not quite as impressive as his father. Um, he would be a perfectly good um, heir. If we are able to produce an even better one, then we could, we could consider trying to manage and sort of like manipulate a certain person to, to you know, if there's somebody that's better than, than our uh, current heir. Um, Helgi. Okay, so, so let's have a look at our, at our domain. You see that we have really most of the kingdom of Novgorod. I think Vodi is the only bit that we don't have that's a part of that kingdom. We are not the king. We don't have a king title, but we could literally get it now. We've got plenty of money out of interest. What would it cost us? I think it's, I think it's 250. Yeah, 250 would give us the kingdom title, so I'd be a king from the beginning of the game if I decide to go down that route. Now, having a look at our counties and our duchies. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that we are the, um, you know, we've, we've got potential. We can see we can very, very easily have six as our domain, and with the queen, we sorry, and be, be, by becoming king, we can have seven. Now, Holmgarden, which is the the first duchy here with this three duchies Hongardra, Vepsia and Luki. Hongardra, I'm already the uh, Duke of um, I think it might be called Jarl in, the, um, in, in this world uh, and there are five, one, two, three, four, five counties there there are, I'm also the Duke of Vepsia and there are three there so five, six, seven, eight. So potentially we're looking at a domain, a kind of a royal domain of eight counties. Um, we won't quite be able to uh, control all eight of them. We might give one of them to my son to give him some experience of, uh, of government, for example. But that would be a really good way of keeping this all in the kind of in, in the kind of family. And then, so even from quite early on, I think I'll be probably investing in these uh, territories and, and, and building them up. A um, little bit of an issue is that, as you can see on this chart that I have here, um, 
uh, Ingvar controls Peskov, which is which is this bit over here. I'll go back to the actually easiest thing now is to look at the counties, isn't it? Piskov is controlled by Ingvar, and he also controls Sebez. So these two counties here. Now I really want those um, off him, and uh, Vodi is actually outside of my. Um, realm at the moment but it's a one county realm so I'm going to be able to take that in fact that's going to be one of the first things that I do and that will give me one two three counties in um, Holmgarden um, over here in uh, in Vepsia I am the Duke and I control Bluzera which is the capital I control Tingvin um, but Karu uh, one of my um, important vassals at the beginning controls that one and then Luki currently isn't controlled by anyone. There isn't a duke there. Um, that might be something that I form to get some extra um, prestige to build extra troops. Um, uh, Biziki is controlled by Kiru. I control Luki, and Kiru also controls Valdai. Okay. So there's going to be some mucking around with uh, uh, taking counties off people, rearranging them, etc. Um, that, that should be fun. And if we have a quick look at this guy, he has a son and heir, but he's not married. He's only 35 years old. So I, don't, I, I, I actually kind of hate doing these kinds of things, even though it's just a game. But the, the possibility is to kind of perhaps, to perhaps murder the son. He doesn't have a son. He can't produce an heir. Um, and it'll simply revert to me in, at some point in the future. Alternatively, at some point, I build up um, tribal rulers. A, 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 no, that's the character's going to be imprisoned. It's this one, isn't it? High tribal authority will allow me to revoke titles. And yeah, I'll probably have to fight a war, but um, but we can we can choose the timing for that. And don't forget that this sheet is uh, available from our Patreon. It's only one pound now to join our Patreon. That's what we decided to go for in the end. If you are from somewhere else in the world, that is slightly more than a dollar. Um, you can download these. Uh, these, Of course, you can make them up yourself. Absolutely, you don't need to become a patron at all. But um, details of the Patreon are in the, um, in the notes and the comments. So please do have a look at them if that's something that you would be interested in doing. So that seems, that feels like um, that feels like a quite a sensible idea. So that's that's a good position for us to be in. Let's have a quick look at our culture. So um, we are Norse, but interestingly, we are not really ruling over anybody who's Norse. As you can see you can see these people up here, uh, a, a, Ves, a Vepsian, um, though I'm the, uh, the, the 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 top liege. Uh, and the same here, I'm the top leash, but actually the lands I'm ruling over are, are Russian. I think eventually we're going to want to become Russian. And I think the best way to do that would be to form a hybrid culture, which uh, we can't do at the moment, but um, we only need to get to cultural acceptance 20. I think that's a feature of the Norse. It would give us a couple of innovations, moats and ledgers, and only cost 313. In terms of traditions, we would be able to keep the um, coastal warriors, which gives us wonderful things like the um, the Huskulls and the Varangian veterans. But we could also try this out, which is just a, which just actually it's just it's, it's, they're not dissimilar. It might be worth me having a closer look before I make that decision. But they're just another um, kind of. Um, the Drusina are uh, another type of um, heavy infantry, aren't they? Um, but we've also got um, the, the, the ting meat, I think, is a part of my current culture. But anyway, we'll, we'll be able to pick and choose from these two, four, six, these eight. We'll be able to have five of these uh, traditions. We get ledger, which is actually really, really useful if we become Russian, because we will get uh, up to our eight uh, domain limit. And we could have moats, which would be um, really, really super. Uh, next thing that I do want to look at, really, is my military. See, Bondi, interesting in all sorts of ways. I'm really not interested in them. Um, I think we're going to be getting rid of those relatively quickly. Uh, Veman, I think probably similar. I think we're going to try to focus on Varengian veterans. And by so doing, we'll have these 
awesome, um, awesome numbers here. Actually, just having a little look back at those Russian. Right, so interestingly, if we had Druzina, they've got good screen, whereas my Varengians have good um, chase. Uh, sorry. Yeah, have good uh, pursuit. Um, and actually, it would be the ideal would be that we'd have some Varengian veterans and we'd have uh, some of the uh, Druzina. And the other thing that we have that, of course, is enormously uh, valuable is that we got these 1,000 troops here. The problem with them is that when they die, they die, they don't rebuild. I'm going to use them early game an awful lot to try and help to build up the size of power of my men at arms quickly. And then I'm just going to accept that they're going to get lost really, really quickly. Anyway, let's, uh, let's launch into it and see what our start is like. Let's have a look at the chosen lifestyle. Okay, all right. So we don't have the ones down here which would have helped with marriages, but that doesn't really matter. These are all on the whole pretty good. Um, we're going to want um, we're going to want serve the crown next, and then we're going to want to work up up this route here. I think we are going to go for um, authority focus for the uh, control growth improvement. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, we're a four a four star marshal, so we'll soon we'll soon have that ability. Right, quick look at the military. Right, eight knights. Um, it might be that these guys are e inexpensive to purchase because I got 550 odd um, gold there. Yeah, they're inexpensive, so we might as well buy those. So we're nearly up to strength, uh, full strength with short two knights. So we'll have a look at our. Um, well, let's look at our courtiers first. Right, they all look awful, don't they? I mean, Chieftain Ingvar doesn't look too bad as my spy. If I could just pause here for a moment to say that if you are still watching the video and you're getting something out of it, please consider giving it a like and even subscribing. Subscribing in particular does make me very excited. Thank you very much. Right then, so marriages. Well, let's just see if I've got anybody. Uh, ah, right, so we have got a number of women who are unmarried and who are hmm, relatively inexpensive to purchase. She is. She's also a lunatic, the last one. Okay. Right, let's sort out some marriages. I'll be back and show you what I've done in a minute. I will take some time thinking about Helgi. Okay, so Helgi, I think the best thing for him would actually to be to get somebody with a good trait. I mean, someone who's at least at least quick would reinforce that trait in the family. Right. So she doesn't she doesn't come with any um, alliance. But I think I'm going to go for that anyway. She looks like a good wife for my son. Okay. Let's have a look at our military then. So we have. Um, Bondi and Veeam, and none of them I'm crazy about. So a lot of our um, um, as aspects of our military will be um, boosted by the fact that we've got all of these all of these perks. Uh, you know, we've got heavy infantry screen is better, for example. You know, all sorts of all sorts of things. I'm not crazy about these guys. Obviously, they're there, so I'm not going dis to dis dismantle them or dis disband them. But I will be um, building uh, Varengian veterans as much as I can. That's as much as I can. Um, going down here and holding, uh, calling a hunt. Okay, that feels like a really good idea. Um, I can also become the king. So let's create that title. Because I just want this prestige, really. <laughs> Oh, these sort of very mediocre kind of uh, banners, really. But let's uh, let's stick them up. Everything helps, doesn't it? So I think we're going to have some more champions by the time the marriages have come through. Um, we've now got a, we've now got enough to increase the size of this a couple of times. That's uh, fantastic. Um, I said I wanted to take over 
uh, Vodi. So let's let's actually put that in place, shall we? Like so, Vodi. Let's declare war on this guy. He's uh, he's very weak. We're absolutely fine taking him on. Uh, it's going to cost a little bit of prestige. We need to move our rally point to here. And here we are going to ra raise Jarl Yurik's host. I'm going to put uh, Chieftain Karu, who's a pretty good commander, I put him in charge. He's going to fight that battle on his own. And the, the whole logic really is that these troops, as good as they are, when they die, they don't die, they don't come back. Okay, so I'm just going to use them at the beginning to save me using this force that I'm building up. You know, I'm waiting for these guys to be 400 strong. I don't have to wait. I can already start attacking with these guys, and I can possibly send these out to help them if they look like they're in trouble. Um, that's the plan, really. So at the moment, she is providing us with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Far more than the five that she would give us if she was given one particular thing. But she's she's a good queen. She's a good queen, no question about that. Uh, this chap is just going to be increasing our relations, our religious relations. Chief Din Kardu is going to be promoting cultural acceptance. I'll show you why we're going to do that in a moment. Um, this guy is going to be foreign affairs because I want more of that. Um, we're going to be improving uh, night effectiveness and you are going to be looking for secrets how do you do that in Peskov oh because he is he is right I need to change him so what's our best right let's get Asta in instead and let's use her to spy on Ingvar Marshall get him in there Chancellor Get him in there, steward. Not a brilliant steward. Not a brilliant steward at all. But Boodley would be better. I'm just going to go for it. Boodley, it is. Let's get Sigridra. Into this job, and that she's much, much better. Got a much, much better selection of councillors there. Budley isn't going to be lasting very long. That's uh, that's for certain. Right. Let's see what happens with the hunt and see if I get enough to increase the size of my um, men at arms again. So every time I say we press on, I get an extra seventy-five. But of course, there's risks, isn't there? Or I could just get this courtier to like me more. I don't really care what she thinks of me. Nice. So I'm able to increase this again. So we're already at um, at the limit for this particular um, regiment. Albeit it's going to take time for them to uh, kind of reset, to kind of sort of like build up. So Ingvar is offering me the opportunity of holding a big festival which will bring the Norse and Russian traditions closer together, increase it by 20%. I think we need to go for that, and I'll show you exactly why as soon as we get out of this court. Okay, so let's just have a quick look. So I've got this idea of combining these two uh, cultures together, um, Norse and Russian. If I click on Russian here, I don't want to form, yeah, I do want to form a hybrid culture. Um, I'm missing 310. Okay, so all I need is 310 prestige, and I can do it. I'm going to get moats and ledger straight away. Um, yeah, I'm never going to be the um, leader from here. Okay, good. Okay, so we've won our uh, war in Novgorod. Uh, have we got any more prisoners? That's worth double checking. Who's this guy? Absolutely useless. Okay, let's simply demand conversion. 
and gain a weak hook and release him. Right, I need to give away a county or use my wife. I think we're going to do that. We're going to change my wife to um, manage domain, and that gets us up to six. That's fine. Could build a rune stone. I think we'll do that. Put it in Vody. Okay. I've got a lot of extra money. Have I got enough yet to hybridize the um, culture? Uh, yes. I can't believe I'm going to be getting Mots and Ledger. Ledger is going to be fantastic because of the plus one domain. I'm going to go straight to uh, seven. I mean, I can even put the queen back onto doing something else. But Mots means I can build the fortifications. It's just fantastic. Right, we're doing it. We just need to look at this. I want to keep this. Let's kind of I get confused about what's turned on and what's turned off. Let's make sure everything here is turned off. OK, so at the moment, I have none selected. I want that, because that's my Drusina, which I'm going to start building now. I want that. Excellent. Two. I can have three more. See, that Malleable Invaders was the really useful thing that we just did. I'm tempted to keep that. Scandinavian Elective Succession. We have to have that or similar. So we have to have those two. We'll have two more. I don't like performative honour. So I am looking at Northern Stories, which is the Rune Stones, and Mendicant Preachers. Misty, I'm not bothered about them. Go for that. We've still got one left. Malleable invaders. All right, I'm now the head of my own culture. Okay, innovations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, we're almost enough to to go for the adopt feudal ways thing. Yeah, and not many, not many more, a couple more. Got to be crop rotation then. Have I got something that I am being exposed to? Not at the moment. So I always forget to do this when I'm playing a Viking, so I can do my personal uh, deity. Now the obvious thing with this guy is to become even better at fighting. My marshal could be up three. That's not at all insubstantial. But I want him to be good at other things as well. So I think what we're going to do is go for Thor. Thor. Because I just want this to keep going up. Right, let's look at the Empire of Russia. Okay, it's humongous. Easiest thing. How close are we to? Okay. Easiest thing, I think, is to just be attacking one place at a time over and over again. So let's have a look down here. I don't have enough prestige. So what I think I should be doing is doing a little bit of raiding. So let's bring this to here and let's raise all let's go for all men at arms why not
Right, so I think that's the end of that raiding cycle. Um, we did a pretty good job. We raided everything around here. Um, army's a little bit depleted, so obviously we'll build that up for a little bit. Military. Next one is Druzinas. So they actually kind of like kind of compensating for each other just a little bit. Um, Varengian veterans counter heavy infantry and cavalry, which is really useful. I don't think these counter anything, just ordinary spearmen. Right, so we're going to stop here today. So far, we've captured one county. We've built up a fairly powerful force. Uh, we have become a king. We have amalgamated our two cultures. So when we come back in our next session, we're going to be thinking about how do we attack uh, these places around us. And what I'm really thinking is we take... I, I, is, is that we, we save up and we attack Minsk uh, all, in, all in one go. It might involve murdering or, uh, or allying his allies so they can't become in, involved. That might be something that we're doing. We'll take a place like um, uh, um Perhaps we'll take something off um, Opalia. I'm kind of keen to move quickly in this direction because we're going to come up against Kazaria quite soon. Kazaria is probably already expanding in this direction, taking territory that we want. Um, the other thing is I could take like one county from Kargul because there'd be the five years for it to like um, become more, uh, you know, to a truce time. Um, then I could perhaps take, take one from Vologda, take one from Opolia, uh, one from Vladimir, one from here, try maybe go for that, all that in one go. Um, it'd be a big breakthrough pushing our way down into the kingdom of Minsk, getting close towards even having a second, uh, a second title. But we're going to be killing emperors of Khazaria. I mean, what's his name? Kagan Manasseh the second of Khazaria. Yeah, he's going to die. And it's probably useful that he currently only has one heir. But right now, I've already got a bit of a list in my mind of people that I'm planning to murder. I'll see you tomorrow.